In the previous video, we show how to instantiate QRadar in AWS. Let's now do a managed host. So again, we in the marketplace, we look for QRadar IBM. We're going to click here on the managed host. And by the way, I forgot to mention that in the video description of these videos, there is a link that shows the documentation on, on how to follow the steps. They are so simple, so I'm not referring to the documentation, but the link is in the video description. So we are here in the uh, manage host and, uh, you know, we pay Amazon for running the service and we need to provide the appropriate curator license. So we click here, continue to subscribe, very similar to what we did on the actual uh, console instance. So again, this is the machine that we are uh, selecting as the only option that we have so far. This is the, you know, 731 patch 7 with interim fix 1 already installed. My, in my particular case, my region is Ohio, so I click here, click to launch. And in here, below, I'm going to put as I did before, the security groups, the keys, you know, all the data. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to post the video, put that information. I want to expose that, uh, other than I'm logging into my, uh, market, my marketplace account. And I'm going to resume once I have put all that info. So I have put all that information, the keys and, and all that. And one, one important thing is that you, you need to make sure by default it will happen, but you need to make sure that you, put the managed host in the same subnet as the curator console so they can talk to one another. And then um, once I have put all that info, I click uh, launch. And now we'll see that instance being created when we click here into EC2 console. However, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to mask with a white uh, cover the, the parts of information that are that I don't want to expose out and I'll resume the video after that. Okay, so here we are. We need to wait as we did before until this thing that reads initializing gives me the two out of two. And this is the Curator console. I actually install it again. Um, so if you see IP addresses or, or numbers are different is because I reinstantiate this. It's actually very easy. So I'm going to pause the video until this uh, completes. That didn't take long at all. So now that this is uh, ready, I'm going to go down here uh, and I'm going to grab the private key that is on the same subnet as my curator console is. Perhaps I was not quite clear. So you need to use both the private and the public key. We use the public key as I'm using it right now to SSH with my keys into the actual instance. And we're going to use the private key, which I also copy into the clipboard, to use it to attach the managed host into the console later. So again, I'm going to SSH using the public key of the managed host, and I put in my clipboard the private key when I will attach it. I click here, yes, the first time. Now, what we need to do is sudo as before, but instead of doing the auto install that we did before, we're going to do it here. Instead of root auto install, we're going to do root run first. And then we're going to put the code associated with the type of managed host that we want to do. And this is in the documentation. Again, there's a link in the video description for that. 1599, for example. And we hit enter. This is going to do the installation process. This is much, much quicker than what the console will take. But I'm going to pause the video again until that finishes and I'll be right back. So that took just a couple of minutes. I'm going to put the password, as I did in the console case. And 
we are done here. Now we are going to use the private key to attach this into the Curator console we installed in the first video. Of course, to get to the console, I need to use the public key of the uh, console installation that we did before. Put the password that we did at the end of that installation. Notice that it's telling me you need to come back with your license. And we're going to go to the admin tab. Actually, move this a little bit to the right. And we're going to add the manage host we just instantiated. So we go to system and license management. Uh, deployment options, I think, yep, it's here at host. We put the private key of the manage host. Let me make sure I got that right. Yeah, that seems to be the right one the host password that we just did at the end of the installation and that's it let me pause the video until this finishes so this is a good sign that is going to all the steps let's pause the video until this finishes another good sign is that you see here that the it's asking for uh, deploy changes, so let's wait a little longer. So that finished, and in the pull down, the only option that I have is precisely that uh, subnet of the console. I click save. So we close this window and deploy changes. It's actually, yeah, say continue. I'm going to pause it until that finishes. So, you see, it already did the deployment on the console and it's now doing it on the managed host. So, this went well, but let's, let me give you some tips in case that you run into troubles attaching that managed host. Again, Remember that there's the public IP in which you use to SSH, I'm hovering over here, and, and that the one that you use to uh, actually access the, the console. Make sure you know that there's a public and a private. And when you add the managed host, you're going to be using that private IPs, right? This is the console 76 and this is also be you need to make sure that they are in the same subnet that uh, your uh, AWS administrator has the right inbound rules for these uh, babies to talk to one another. Uh, let me actually show, so show you the documentations where it highlights that the ports that you also need to have open. And if you go to the marketplace, you see that that icon I'm going to put the link anyway on the on the video description but that thing uh, when you click on it it takes you to that knowledge center uh, documentation where all these steps are nicely documented you see the the steps we did and this is the part where I believe it is where it specify the type of ports that needs to be actually open now and finally, in, I'm here in the PuTTY or terminal section where I log in into the manage host directly, where we SSH into it. If we go to var logs, we can actually, you know, do sudo less curator.error and we, you can see any error that may explain to you why is it that you cannot communicate. With, between the managed host and the curator console. It's pretty easy. I hope I didn't take too much of your time giving you some extra hint in case that something does not work 
in the way you did in my video.